Hey guys, Mr. Klein here with our lesson on testing solutions and engineering. In this lesson, we're going to actually look at how our designs that we've created actually work and how do engineers use testing to make sure that their designs don't just work but are suitable for their customers. So let's go ahead and get started. So the F-22 Raptor is the main fighter jet for the United States Air Force. It's considered to be a quantum leap in aerospace and stealth technology and is expected to last for years on end. In fact, some engineers and industry analysts say it'll be the last manned fighter aircraft the United States ever has. So the question is, how did the United States go from this initial sketch in 1972 for an advanced tactical fighter to this aircraft flying in 2018? Well, it's through testing, and that's where we're going to get started with this lesson. It's talking about why is testing so important. So designing solutions and engineering can be tough, especially when all the hard work that went into a design is wasted due to the product not working as planned. After all, you could put all this work into this housing complex, but it isn't any use if it collapses. How do we make sure stuff like that doesn't happen? Well, engineers minimize the chance of a design's failure by subjecting their design to rigorous and systematic testing. It is through testing that an engineer determines whether the product operates according to their design, finds areas for improvement in future versions, and meets the needs of their customer. As a result, again, going back to the F-22, it is through testing that we went from 1986 to 1988, over two years, such a radical design of the aircraft, to what we have now. So let's go ahead and let's start filling out our graphic organizer. So testing engineering designs. Why? Well, it's to make better informed design decisions in order to make our design better. In our next section, we're going to talk about what we actually use in order to do testing, and that is a prototype. So in many testing projects, engineers actually don't use the example of the final product in order to test, but rather they create a modified version of their design that we call a prototype, okay? So a prototype is kind of like your first product based on your initial design that you're gonna test and see if your design actually works. Prototypes can be used to test either small parts of the whole design or even the entire design itself. We can see this right here with a prototype of a piece of software. Okay, and so in this app, it's the prototype isn't actually the piece of software at this stage of the design. It's actually a sheet of paper with drawings showing what your icons are going to look like, what the screen looks like when you're going to do it, and things like that. So prototypes can go from sheets of paper to actual physical designs like the YF-22 that you saw earlier. So let's add this to our organizer. You know, how do we test engineer designs? Well, we build a prototype. Often, the prototype differs from the final product in one of three ways. And that's where we're going to look at right here. So first off, often the prototype is made of materials that are different from that of the final product. If the final product requires expensive materials, what will often happen is the prototype might be built with cheaper materials because you don't want to go through in case of an airplane that crashes, that's a whole lot of waste of money. So even though we have all this computer generated design and things like that, most cars are still getting their initial shape through the use of clay, where sculptors and engineers figure out the layout of the car before they move forward. So let's add this to our graphic organizer. Okay, so you build a prototype. Well, one will be with cheaper materials. And the next difference is that prototypes are often built in a different manner than the final product, usually because they're built in such small numbers. You might build a million different widgets, but your prototype's going to be built one at a time or a few at a time. As a result, you have to build it a little bit differently. And you can see this from an old school toy transformer. Okay, the prototype is on the left, a star scream, and the one on the right is the actual product. The one on the left, you don't see any paint, it's all made with the same color, and you don't see any of the differences there. It's just to make sure that the transformer would well transform, and that's what they wanted it to look like. So let's add this to our graphic organizer. So a prototype usually is made of cheaper materials, it's made in smaller numbers, and finally, the details in the prototype versus the final product can be quite different. The reason why is some prototypes types might differ in size. For example, airplanes in a wind tunnel, they make a small model and they don't usually create a larger mock-up of one for a wind tunnel test until much later on, if at all. And even in terms of completeness, when the prototype is used to test a single component of the final product. In other words, you know, like in some cases of cars, they might just put the base of the car down and test something instead of building a new car. And we can see the details going back to the YF-22 and F-22 right here. This is from a magazine 
Magazine article in 1998 showing all of the differences between the prototype, the YF-22, the one on top, and the F-22, the fighter jet that is in service today. So there's all of these major improvements and differences to the exterior of the plane, not to mention everything that was different on the inside of it. So let's go ahead and let's finish out this section is that, you know, prototypes may be made of cheaper materials, they're made in smaller numbers, and they often have different details. And so in our next section, we're going to actually talk about the type of tests that engineers use to see if their projects will actually work as intended. Now, engineers use a myriad of tests in order to make sure that their designs work. Now, the types of tests that an engineer uses on their design, it actually depends on the product itself and its function. As a result, we're not going to go into every single different type of test an engineer uses because this video will be like 10 hours long. Uh, however, we can kind of lump these tests into three categories, and we're going to look at them one at a time. The first one, and like the biggest, most general group, is what we call functional testing. Now, functional testing refers to any test that evaluates whether a product actually works according to its design. Designers of software will sometimes call functional tests usability test and the reason why is the functional test of software is to see if the software can be used by the end user correctly and this can go anywhere from whether your car door opens to whether your car can survive a car crash and because if the individual functions of safety fail well then the person is mincemeat so let's go ahead and let's add this to our graphic organizer so how do we test engineering designs well not only do we build a prototype we develop different tests and the first grouping are functional tests the other two are kind of related. Uh, the first one being stress testing. This refers to tests that are designed to find the limits of a product's design. In other words, we want to find where the materials will actually break or fail and find out whether we need to strengthen things or whether we're using the right materials for it. For instance, the stress test on a steel beam may be designed to see where and how the beam breaks, while a stress test for a video game may test how many users can play on a server at once without the server crashing or there being lag or anything like that. Now this image right here is of a computer generated stress test on a steel beam. The yellow arrow points downwards and as you can see the most stress is actually being put on the middle of the steel beam. So let's add this to our graphic organizer. Stress tests are the second type of test that engineers use. The final one are safety tests. Safety testing refers to tests that are designed to find the safe limits of a product's operation. In other words it's fine and dandy that your product works but is it going to actually hurt the person using it? Now for instance, safety tests on power tools can lead to specific instructions on their use. You know, don't take a, you know, electric drill and throw it in a tub. Like, don't try it at home. Ever. Not only that, they could be to the development of protection for the user and the product itself. And which leads to things like, you know, things that help keep your head from being caught in a car doors that automatically close. It. Oh, you might want to, like, make sure it actually works. You know, like that poor guy, he actually ended up spraining his neck. So the final thing we can add to the different types of tests are safety tests. So it's not just whether the test actually works, but it's whether the person's going to be safe using it. And in our next section, we're going to talk about how after these tests are done, how do engineers use the results both positive and negative. Engineers use the results of their testing to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of their design and figure out ways to improve their design until it's a perfect fit for the end user. So whether the test was a success or not, it gives the engineer information in order to whether keep their design or they have to go back and fix something and improve this. Testing results are often used by engineers to guide the refinement of the design, with the new version of the product being tested again to see if these refinements work themselves. And then whenever you have a series of objects and products being built over the years, they build on this testing and experiencing it better and better. For instance, I have two screenshots of iPhones. The one on the left is from the iPhone 3GS in 2009, uh, whereas the one on the right is from from the iPhone X came out in late 2017. As you can see, the screens got bigger, much higher quality, and also over the course of time, if you notice, the icons actually change in their design sense. In other words, the original ones kind of have that realistic look, skew morphism, which 
which I slightly mispronounced. Whereas the newer iPhone, the iPhone X, the design is much flatter. But you can see how, you know, for instance, the App Store that designed A has kind of changed over time, but it keeps the same design influences with them. So let's add this to our organizer. What's the purpose of building the prototype and developing the test? Well, the whole purpose is to improve the design. Maybe not in your final product you're about to release, but if you continue developing and releasing products, it can make changes down the road. And in our final section, we're going to talk about a specific form of engineered design thinking that's totally wrapped around the testing process and allowing users to use their product. While the engineering process involves improvements from the testing of designs, and that's what we've gone over in this lesson, there is a particular method of designing solutions that is totally centered around the testing phase, and it's what we call the iterative process. Now, we'll oftentimes see the iterative process in software, but we actually will see it in other forms of engineering design as well. Now, in the iterative process, the prototype is tested and used in its intended purpose. In other words, it's not so much stress tested even though it might be in some cases, but it's given to the user to try out. And the reason why is to see how well the design operates as well as finding areas of improvement to focus on. So in other words, you end up in this cycle of creating a prototype, letting someone use it, observe what's happening when they use it, and then improve it based on feedback. With the iterative process, the cycle is actually relatively quick and continues until the project is perfected. This is really, like I said, important in software design and we can actually see it in video games. For example, news came out in 2017 in the development of Zelda The Breath of the Wild for the Nintendo Switch was that one of the instances of the iterative process used by Nintendo was they created an old school Nintendo entertainment system based game of Breath of the Wild for playtesters to work on. They were working on some sort of game mechanic and they put it out for users to play it and try it internally and the lessons of which resulted in this breathtaking game that sweeps pretty much all awards before it. And as a result, Zelda The Breath of the Wild is a perfect example of the iterative process. From the lessons learned from the 2D version, they were able to create this 3D version. So let's go ahead and let's wrap up our lesson. Let's add the iterative process to our graphic organizer and explain what it is. It's cycles of testing to make better versions of your design based on the feedback of the users. Why do we test engineering design? Well, it's to make better informed design decisions. And we do this through building of prototypes that are used to develop different tests. And the whole purpose of this is to improve your design for the end user or to solve the problem that you have yourself. So there you go. That's the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And if as always you have any questions, please let me know and thanks for watching.